Well, how you doing, Bulls fans? Welcome to the latest edition of the In the Bullseye podcast. I'm voice of the Bulls, Paul Peck. It's our semi-regular visit, as we always do, with Vice President and Director of Athletics, Mark Allnut. And we've got a couple things to talk about, sure. focused a little bit on the change in leadership at the football spots. So we want to get into a little bit of depth with that, Mark, and we always appreciate your honesty and your insight whenever we touch on this stuff. And, you know, and I guess let, let's start with the, a question that I know you have gotten. I think you addressed it a little bit a couple weeks ago in the press conference, but it's part of your job as an athletic director, even when things are nice and calm, are you always thinking about how you react if there needs to be a change? People talk about the lists that you keep and stuff, but give me a sense of how maybe that's part of your job you're always thinking about. You know, you're always trying to, you know, assess talent and, and identify talent. And even like you said, it's perfect, perfect segue to this is even when things are going well, or when you, you know, anticipate things or are, are moving in the direction that you that you find satisfactory, uh, you never stop thinking about, hey, if something was to happen tomorrow, if something was to happen, you know, after next season, like who are those people? Who are people that that we feel that can lead the program that we feel that want to be here in Buffalo? We feel can, you know, continue to elevate the program in the way that you know I expect, um, you know, our fans and alumni expect to be able to, you know, make that happen. So, you know, people talk about about the list and I always mention that that list is always ever changing, you know, just based on, you know, where these people uh, end up in their career or, you know, the trajectory of their career, you know, might not be for for Buffalo or, or maybe the the fit isn't there or, or or maybe something else that happened, but you know, as you go through this this process, it's, you know, not necessarily a list per se, but just understanding, you know, who are folks that are out there that would be, be great for Buffalo. Is sometimes that list as simple as uh, you meet somebody that you're impressed with? You watch a game that you're like, boy, they did a great job. Uh, you know, I, I like how that guy handled it. Uh, it you know, a, as simple as, you know, connections throughout the business where you're like, hey, I got a guy, man. He's really sharp. We're not making doing anything about our head coach, but it, if you need one, is that where that list is? Uh, you know, a combination of all that. Well, I'm glad you bring that up. You know, can it be relationships? Can it be your network? Can it be just being a football fan and and seeing a program how that program has 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 you know become you know more and more competitive and you know winning championships, uh, whatever the case might be. Um, you're looking at you know the up and coming assistant coach, uh, associate coach, the coordinator. So you know you have a combination of of all that, but then. Also, the same token, if you're, you know, you're taking notes and all that, you know, your list is going to be 100 to 200 people right. easily. So it, it's it's a process, again, of, you know, the timing of everything, the, the fit of everything, and really just being confident and sure of yourself in terms of, like, who that next person, you know, might be. And, you know, in this case, it was football, but, you know, very similar, you know, for men's and women's basketball, you know, or, or other uh, revenue sports that you have to really – as I say, perpetual motion in regards to, you know, hey, things are going well, like you mentioned, something could happen, things might not be going well, you know, what are the next steps? And and to your point, you know, you have to be, you know, use the word react to it, you know, in, in some cases you have to be, you know, proactive and, and keeping this list and, and keeping these you know, individuals kind of in the, in the bullpen over here is, is really just being proactive. So it's not waiting to what happens and then trying to decide, you know, what those next steps might be. You said if something were to happen, and the thought, this thought occurred to me, you've been on this job for six years, right? You have had to deal with a football coach leaving in May, which was almost unprecedented. Uh, you had a men's basketball coach a week after he signed a contract extension, takes an incredible yep. leap to a, to an SEC job. You had a women's basketball coach that sort of the whole world kind of knew she was likely to leave even during the course of a season. And then you have a sitting head coach in January that decides to give up that job to go take an assistant. So aside from having to hire and be ready to hire, you've got a few challenges that have been thrown Yeah, you, you do. You do. But, I mean, that's the, that's the part that you really um, maybe enjoy is not the, the right word. But, you know, obviously you just have to – you know, it keeps you on your toes, you know, so to speak. And, and you know, you have to feel, you know, and do what you feel is right for, for the program. And when something like that happens, and, you know, one thing you need to throw in there is just also having, you know, about a year and a half of, of dealing with COVID where we had to learn how to pivot, you know, quickly and, and, and move a, a certain direction and be able to adjust to a different way of how we do business, how we live, 
you know, whatever the case might be. So, you know, someone asked me if, if I was surprised, yes and no. Um, you know, you mentioned the, the timing of that. You mentioned, um, you know, sitting head coach to, to become a, a position coach in the, in the P5. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you're somewhat surprised, but then you, you quickly refocus and understand, okay, you know, we, we've been this, through this before in May. You know, we, we've been through this after a contract signing, as you mentioned. We've been through this uh, when, when the world knew <laughs> that, uh, you know, we're going to have a coach go back to, you know, um, her alma mater. So you just uh, buckle in. Um, kind of go, I'm not going to say bunker because there's a few people that, um, you know, worked very closely uh, with me, uh, including the president, you know, on this one. Uh, you put together a plan and, and you move forward. And, you know, for us, we were very fortunate to land, you know, where we landed with uh, Coach Limbo. All right, so it's mid-January and Coach Linguist tells you, or at least you find out, that he is choosing to leave. What? How does that? What, what are the first steps? How does that plan go into place? Like, okay, didn't think this was happening, didn't expect it. Now have to react to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go back to January 16th. How, how it all went down. Uh, received a phone call from Coach Linguist about one one o'clock, saying that um, you know he uh, had a conversation the night before with with Alabama and. Um, he was, you know, alerting me that uh, he's going to have additional conversations with, uh, with Alabama. You know, at that time, he really wasn't sure uh, where his mind was, you know, with that. And uh, I said, hey, well, before you do anything, let's just at least have a conversation. And obviously, I would respect, um, you know, any decision that was, that was made. Ten minutes after that, I get a call from Greg Byrne. The, the AD at Alabama, very similar call that I received from Greg. <laughs> he's, he's made a few tough <laughs> yeah. phone calls to you. Yeah, yeah, with, uh, with, with NATO. So, you know, we chatted for a couple minutes, and then, you know, I, I just point blank to ask him, is this a done deal? And when he told me that uh, yeah, he believed uh, that it was, uh, you know, right then and there, as soon as I hung up on the, uh, on the call, I was in search mode. You know, hey, what are the next steps? What do we need to do? Even though I haven't heard from, um, you know, Mo in regards to his decision yet, I, I knew where we were headed in my mind. I, you know, I reached out, I reached back out to uh, to Mo and told him, hey, I had a conversation with uh, <laughs> with Greg Byrne. Is this a done deal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and even at that time, he told me, you know, he still needed to talk to you know a few folks. It's not a done deal. He wanted to come by the office, and and which he did. Oh, about 30, 30, 45 minutes later, we chatted for about 20 minutes in regards to, um, you know, expectations, obviously, for, for next year and, you know, the support that uh, will be out there for his, uh, for his program. Uh, you know, obviously, we were going through some assistant coaches, uh, some hirings there where we needed to sort through, you know, all that. And at the end of that conversation, um, just told him, hey, you know, I know you haven't made a decision yet. As he shared with me, he was going to go home and, and talk more with Stacy. Just just let me know, please. Just just as a courtesy, let let me know um, whatever direction you you go. I'm I'm good with, and we move forward and um, head back to the house. Uh, I was getting ready for I, I don't know was that that Tuesday night maybe maybe dinner or whatever the case might be. And then I then I see the tweet that comes out from Adam Rittenberg saying that he is uh, headed to Alabama. And I was like, okay, you know, you get a tweet before you get a phone call. It's, it's kind of that day and age that we, mm -hmm. that we live in now. And, um, you know, reached out to Mo and said, Hey, I just saw this tweet. Um, you know, he shared with me, didn't know, you know, he was surprised by it as well. Didn't know where it came from and that he was headed up to the facilities to, um, you know, gather some things, um, put together a zoom, for the team, and um, that was essentially it. So on my way from that phone call, you know, immediately uh, I'm going through that list in my head. And at that time, I, I was very confident in terms of the people who I was going to approach um, that I wouldn't need a search firm. But at the same token, I wanted just to have a search firm in place just in case. So, you know, work with the appropriate folks on campus to put together RFP. That is quick, quick turnover, and, and reached out to a few of the search firms, just saying, "Hey, here's where I am. Here's what's, uh, here's what's going on." Very open and honest and candid with them, saying that I, I believe I can do this without uh, any assistance, but just in case, I want you to, you know, be able to respond to this RFP that's going to be coming out uh, later, later tonight. Which great conversations with, uh, with with those folks. 
um, had a, um, a a Zoom team meeting that uh, you know Mo put together, and you know jumped on there and just reassured the uh, student athletes that um, you know, hey, we're on this. Um, you know, the search process has already begun, and uh, you know, I anticipate us you know moving you know quickly, but not just for the sake of quickness, mm-hmm. but be able to find the right person to come in here and just and just be patient uh, because the at that time again it was January sixteenth. That was a Tuesday. School was going to be in session on Wednesday. So my time frame that I put together was, you know, being able to um, have someone in place by the first day of by the first day of school at the latest. Um, you're going through that night, and again, you're just you're, you're thinking about this. Uh, not not too many hours of sleep, you know, that 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 first night because you're you're putting together that profile in terms of needs for uh, our department. Our university, Western New York, uh, na- in a, from a Mid-American Conference standpoint, nationally in terms of you know what what the qualities of the next head coach you know look like, and and being able to zero in some of those some of those key qualities there, uh, I was able to pull an internal team together that next morning, um, you know, uh, a call with with those folks, and we chatted about that, and you know we were pretty much in sync with the qualities I came together. Uh, with the folks that were on that on that call, people I recognize uh, that that you know, Deanne Keller, mm-hmm. you know, Aaron Stang, Eric Gross, uh, Sharon Sanford were uh, were folks internally, and even even talking to the president, keeping him on loop, and just being uh, full uh, full on communication with him in regards to hey, this is what I'm looking for from um, you know qualities and characteristics, and he was he was supportive from that, and 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 really is just it was interesting because like I said, didn't really sleep that much that night because your your mind's racing, and also at that time. As you can imagine, Paul, you're getting blown up. Um, once the word gets out, once Everybody word gets out, it. you know you, you're getting hit up, email. You know, people get your cell phone number, both. Um, you know, your work cell, your personal cell. People trying to reach out to you <laughs> via social media. Um, your your uh, your work email address, your your AD account. But um, <laughs> the thing that uh, really stood out is, you know, I had more clarity in terms of what I was looking for. And I was able to do some work uh, with, you know, some particular agents that are out there of folks that, hey, these people were interested. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint, you have a list of people that we always that we talked about that had the the qualities, characteristics that we're looking for. But quickly, I was able to really just kind of zero in on three. Right. And um, that Wednesday night actually had conversations with um, with with all three. Uh, which was so by night two, you're already at the candidates point. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I want to ask you about the qualifications that you thought about, you know, and, you know, I think th- those of us that follow the Mac have sort of seen a little shift in the coaching personality in the Mac. You know, it, I think at one point it was a young and up and coming yeah. stepping stone job. But now, you know, you've seen the Frank Solches, the Chris mm-hmm. Creightons, the Chuck Martins of the yeah. world, older, experienced guys who had been head coaches at lower level who have had nice runs of sustained success. So where was experience on that on that? That list? was that was high on the list. Someone who had been a head coach, someone who had been a head coach, um, and again, you can look at you know various levels. Whether it was, you know, at the D three level, D two, FCS, um, you know, FBS, but that was a key quality characteristic. And there's so many great coaches out there. So many so many coaches who will have high level jobs that are now coordinators, um, assistant coaches, that. You know, there was some interest from those folks. That also, folks again that I had on my list. Mm-hmm. That uh, you know, at this this point in time, I felt that you know I didn't want to go down that route. I wanted someone that you know was able to to build a program, uh, develop a program, have the appropriate structure in a in a in, in a program organization in a program, and also just just highly communicative. Um, whether it was just internal within the when the program, or even you know working with. Um, you know, within the department and, and camps itself. So that quickly, again, that was that was one of, of the qualities that, as as you mentioned. But as we put that together, and then some other qualities we looked at. You know, you, you had those conversations with those three candidates, and felt felt very good. You know, about the three, were able to uh, move into some some Zoom meetings that uh, that Thursday, Friday, um, well, two on Thursday. One on Friday, and then at after that last one on Friday, I mean, it was really quick 
deliberation in terms of out of the three, who do we want to have as our next head coach? What are the questions that you're asking the candidates, and what are the questions the candidates are asking you in that stage? What, what do you know about Buffalo? What do you what do you what do you think about uh, about about Buffalo? Um, you know, just again, tell me about. Yeah, I want to know their story. You know, I want to know. Um, you know how they how they got started. You know what they're able to do to to achieve whatever they achieve, and essentially up to you know why are we talking today? Um, I think the questions from them because we're able to quickly also feed them a. Um, uh, what we call a view book. You know, every search we have, we we put you know, a view book that just gives you so much detail of not only the program but also of our department, um, the university, Buffalo, and you know we've received positive comments in the past and even this time around from our candidates because you know we share with them. We're very transparent. I mean, we'll we'll share with them good and bad. You know, budgets. We'll share with them. Um, you know, APR. We'll share with them. You know the student athletes in the transfer portal. I mean, we'll, we'll share all this, the roster information. And so for them, you know, they, they see it. And, you know, obviously, you know, they're all working with, with agents. They also have relationships with, with people in the, in the men American conference or, or, or group of five. So they can get their assessment from the information that we share and kind of bounce that around with the people that they rely on. And they, and they see what, you know, the, the candidates say is like, you know, man, didn't know, that you offered this much or are new of you, but wow, what, what an incredible opportunity we have. You know, the one thing that also comes out too is just the, the university itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, the academic um, strength of this institution, you know, being flagship here in the, in the state of New York, being a AAU institution, you know, ranked uh, very high and for, from a public university standpoint, and then also, you know, ranked in the top 85, 90 overall as, as a university. So, you know, there's still that, that element of higher education, which, which, you know, folks still value. And, and it, it, and for them, it makes their job in, in most cases, you know, easier to, to recruit to a play, place right. like this. So last question uh, until we roll into coach Lembo, you've brought it up a couple of times. I think at, in the pro sports world, we think of agents uh, are pretty powerful guys at a lot of levels. Is that a newer factor in the college world dealing with agents, Always. coaches that have agents, you know, it, it, is that something that you find yourself doing more of maybe than no. you used to? No, no, always agents always been around. Agents have always been around and, um, you know, they, they have access to information. So that's why, you know, you have to be transparent and open and honest in terms of, you know, what we have and what we can offer. I mean, they'll have the rundown like we do too, have the rundown of all the other salaries from all the other coaches at a comparable level. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, I had a mentor that didn't want to deal with agents, but, you know, for me, um, I've been dealing with agents ever since I, um, you know, got into administration, even back in Missouri where I was, uh, you know, negotiating um, with our general counsel for, for coaches that, that, that came in. So not a new phenomenon at, at all. And, you know, the thing about also agents too is, you know, there's, there's, there's good ones out there where, you know, I've formed a relationship with and, you know, of course, agents are going to push their own clients, but the good thing about it is, is I can have these conversations about their clients or I can have conversations um, with them about other coaches out there that maybe not their client, but we're all doing the same thing, trying right. to assess talent and everything else. So, so no, you deal with them. So, you know, the offer was out there for, uh, for Pete, uh, that Friday afternoon. And then what, speaking what of, was it that, that, that made you decide and your committee decide Pete was the guy? Several things. Um, again, we talked about one of the main qualities, characteristics we were looking for, someone that head coaching experience. Uh, so, so for him, he's a, he's a Northeast guy. Uh, you know, having that experience at uh, Lehigh, at, at Elon, being successful, being successful at, uh, at Ball State. Um, and then really just taking a step back, and you just talk about humility here, um, you know, becoming an assistant. He left on his own accord from, from Ball State, wasn't, wasn't terminated, wasn't let go. Um, you know, he wanted to climb to that P5 level. But I feel, you know, for him doing that, he's learned so much. And, and he's, he's, he's even said that he's, he's, his, his, his quote is, you know, he, um, he earned a PhD in, in coaching by going to Maryland, right. Spending that time in, in, in Memphis and then also at South Carolina. And I even feel 
more importantly that, you know, for him, his last three years at South Carolina, you know, working with a coach, uh, very similar how he worked with uh, Mike Norvell and Ryan Silverfield at Memphis, but working with Shane Beamer as that veteran presence, but then also being there in a time of where we are in collegiate athletics with NIL, also transfer portal, and then he even evolving to, well, gosh, this is this this portal situation. It it's it's awful, but now embracing it, and so for him to be that that person was again his his experiences, his knowledge of the MAC, strong ties to the Northeast, and then just has really been a part of some some successful builds, and then also too when we talk about assessing talent and identifying talent and, and relying on, on a network of folks. So just the conversations I had with people in the business that hadn't coached with him, um, but know him, I mean, it was, it was extremely positive. And so it was, it was, it was quickly um, from our group standpoint, I'm not just saying this because we hired Pete, but it was a unanimous decision from our from our group that you know we move forward with with offering him and then even the conversation with the president you know he felt because he had opportunity to interact uh, with the three and all three were outstanding candidates but felt that you know Pete had that edge so you offer that job on Friday uh, that afternoon and then really the the negotiations aspect of that you know dealing with uh, the agent and then you know our general counsel and just kind of the back and forth which again nothing nothing out of the ordinary um, uh, but again, you have to go through that exercise, you know, began, you know, that Saturday, that Saturday morning late to about maybe five o'clock, you know, that Saturday, we were able to get this thing signed, sealed, and delivered. Here's a great story about it, right? So Saturday was a long day because you always have in your back of mind, what if something doesn't happen? And you could hit a snag, you could right? hit a snag, something, something could happen. You know, we had two other candidates that were still kind of waiting in tow, you know, over here. So Saturday was a long day, right? It was a long, long day from when I woke up, which was probably like around, I don't know, I'm, I'm a worse sleeper ever sometimes. But <laughs> um, I sleep good at night, but I'm, it's that biological clock where I always wake up at 5 a.m. for whatever reason, right? And so I'm up trying to figure out something to do, maybe walk the dogs, uh, you know, that day. And so we go through this negotiation. So part of all this is what if we hit that snag? And what what's the next step? So finally, you know what we agreed everything and and verbally, like like I told you, like around five o'clock. And then the next step was um, putting together a docu sign to to sign everything. And and so you know it was a couple more hours before you know that happened. Then finally, um, it was a situation where Pete was doing something, his agent was doing something. So they had to get together and and have a phone call. So. They reached out to me about nine o'clock. Uh, we all had a conversation together about the next steps. Everyone was in agreement with everything. Uh, the docu sign was was going to come, and and if you recall, that was the 49ers yes, Packers game. That is correct. That night. So That's right. after that, I had that phone call. Was like during my. I was about to eat dinner, so about nine o'clock. I remember I was done with that phone call about nine twenty, nine thirty, what have you. I was able to eat dinner. Had a little celebratory beverage, you know, you with that. And so I'm just waiting on the DocuSign, right? Lo and behold, you know, I'm still watching the game, and it's like 10.30, no, no DocuSign, and I'm in a recliner. It's bad. Don't, don't be in a recliner, <laughs> right? And so it's like 11.20. I just wake up. I'm like, oh, 11.20, I look down on my phone. I have a missed miss text message from, uh, you know, the pre I missed email today from the president. Uh, the DocuSign had been out for like 30 minutes. So I, I missed the <laughs> initial DocuSign, so I woke up quickly, got on my computer. So relaxed. Si si signed it, signed it, signed it and everything else. Nap, got, yeah, right? took a nap. <laughs> took, a, took, a, took a nap. But. Uh, Matt, five years as the head coach at Ball State, so previous MAC experience. You know, sometimes the MAC is its own animal a little bit in, in the world of college football it is sort of the classic do more with less kind of conference the fact that pete had gone through that understood it didn't question what he didn't have worked with what he did had two of the best seasons in ball state history how important was that part of his resume? it was important it was it was it was definitely important again having a knowledge of of the mac and and understanding you know what we're all about understanding mac you know that was that was key but then also too you look at Man, and you mentioned it earlier, Paul, 
in regards to like, you know, stepping stone, Mm -hmm. you know, someone who has been approached, you know, for jobs in the past and been, been selective and this opportunity, you know, comes around and you know what he is, he, he is all in, um, you know, I, I see him as, as a person that, you know, wants to be here, you know, is going to love being here, going to love the people, going to love, you know, what we have to offer. Um, and it's going to be a person that is going to have some stability and, and longevity. Now, again, not everyone can be Frank Solich. You know, we, we, we understand that. But I feel that, you know, for him, he's, he's at a spot in his career where, you know, he wants to build something special. And that special can be here in Buffalo. Do you think in conversations with your fellow Mac ADs that in some ways that's become more of the model of what's going to be successful in this conference is maybe it's a guy that's been a head coach at a lower level, been a head coach somewhere else, gone back I, to be an assistant. You know, that's you a, know, I, I know every situation. Can yeah. Be every situation is, right? every situation is different. I mean, there, there's sometimes, uh, you know, the coach that can be successful and, and, you know, but also be successful and leave a program in a good place where there might be an internal hire that can be promoted from from within. So, you know, I, I can't tell you if there's a specific model uh, that that's out there. But you know, when when you look at you know the teams that have had success, uh, at least during my tenure, and you even go back for as long as you've been covering Paul, you you look at those coaches that have been you know here for for, and you you mentioned some of the names. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, even a guy like Jason Candle, who's sure. Who is who's been here? Six, he's done, seven years as yeah, the head coach yeah, at Toledo, eight, eight right? Years at Toledo, Lance, you know, six right. six six years here. So, um, I, I will say this: it was it was you know a lot of uh, my peers, you know, reaching out saying, "Man, that's a outstanding hire. That's a that's a that's a great hire." And I think part of it too was just understanding, as you mentioned, um, you know, having that experience here in the MAC, being a head coach, and 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 knowing what it takes, you know, to be able to to build not necessarily build a program, but to be able to inherit a program and and take it to the level where it needs to be taken. So Pete's been the head coach for two weeks, uh, which means, you know, you've seen him in action as you were head coach. What have you learned about him maybe that you didn't know through the interview <laughs> process or maybe some things that have surprised you? Uh, you know, we again, we've seen him interact with alumni, interact with the current players, with uh, recruiting, traveling, all, all those things that we're going to talk to Pete when we get a chance to catch up with him. It's been a, a whirlwind of two yeah. weeks. You know, he has... Uh... Uh, just his energy level is just off the off the charts, and I'm not saying that thinking that the energy was not going to be that that high, but in terms of what he's been able to do in his two weeks here, um, the people who who he's engaged, you know, first and foremost, and the the reactions, you know, from those people. I mean, you know, the thing you get with Pete is you get you get someone that's going to be real genuine, um, and his conversation is not going to be all football speak. You know, it, it, it's going to be. You know, getting to know you, you know who you are, and and being able to articulate, you know what his plan is for the for the program. So, no surprises because you know I garnered a lot of that just through my interaction with him. Uh, I've had previous interaction with with Pete as 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 well. So this wasn't the first time I've actually had conversations uh, with him. Um, and there was a time when I, I went back to Memphis when my oldest was there and I stopped by the facilities and he was a special teams coach and had a chance to you know, introduce myself to him and, 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 and chat with him a little bit. So, um, the one thing I, again, the one thing You'd I say, we're going to work together. Yeah. Together, yeah. Right? No, <laughs> the one thing, the one thing I appreciate, you know, about him is, is, is again, just having this systematic you know, approach to things. Um, and, and really it's, it goes back to the student athletes and as I shared with, the student athletes previously, uh, when Lance left, and then now when Mo left, you know, I was I was part of those transitions as a student athlete, and you know, you're uneasy, um, you know, you're, you're nervous, uh, you don't know who your next person's going to be, but you know, so I've been through their shoes, and so for him to 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 come in um, with his approach, sit down with everybody, and really just give a full assessment of the program from the student athletes, you know, prioritizing what their thoughts are, you know, I thought was, I thought was, that was, that was good. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the feedback has been tremendous, um, you know, so far to this point in terms of just the little things that are occurring and, and, and strength and conditioning, just the interactions that, you know, our kids are having with, uh, with the, with him and, and the coaching staff. So, um, a lot of positive energy, you know, over there, not just coming from Pete and the staff, but also from our kids. Uh, he's the, most of the staff is 
been put together. It's an interesting mix of guys that have been here, which I think is is always good for, th for those players mm -hmm. to have familiar faces. Uh, you know, young and up-and-comers, some Mac connections, uh, stole defensive coordinator away from Miami, which is good. That makes one of those rivals a little bit less than what they were and makes us better. Um, how have you been impressed with that very important well, job? Well, I tell you, that's a, that's a key job, and, and Pete keeps me abreast, and I, I meet with all the, the candidates, you know, um, and the thing that's really impressed me on this is, as you mentioned, you know, bringing a guy like like Joe Bowen uh, in, you know, bringing it, bringing a guy like Adam in, our, our new D line coach, you know, they're coaching at the alma maters, so that tells you something in regards to you know the respect that they have for for Pete to to leave their alma mater to come here to Buffalo, the respect they have for Pete, and then also have an understanding of what we're able to offer here you know, at Buffalo. So um, that is going well. We have one more coach to, to be able to secure, which uh, we should have that secured on, on Monday. And then, you know, just finalizing a couple of the administrative positions. But, All right, uh, final, well. final question for you. Your insight has been uh, amazing here in, in – in bringing everybody into this process, but but I guess what's what's the message to a Bulls fan that's listening to this? That you know, where are we? Where are we going? What's this guy going to do? Is he going to be better than what we had? Is he going to be better than we've ever had before? What what's now that you know Pete, you know how he's going to approach this job, you know what he wants to do. What's the message to all Bulls football? Uh, fans? You have a head coach that's going to be engaged and embedded here in Western New York. Um, you know, one of his first tasks outside of meeting with our student athletes was going around and visiting local high schools um, when he could have gone anywhere. You know, he, that's a that's a priority. Uh, you'll you'll have a person that um, just <laughs> so engaging with, you know, our alums, you know, our donors and understand, too, it's not just Pete Limbo and Mark Allnut that are trying to do everything for the program. It's it takes everybody. And so he's going to be a person that as I answer your question, that it's going to be highly visible. Um, he's going to be a, a, a person that is going to uh, earn your trust. And, and hopefully it's an it's a, it's a ownership aspect of this program for people that, that are out there. Uh, it's going to be open, transparent, and, you know, the work's going to be put in. And, and you know, again, we expect to, to be competitors uh, in the MAC. We expect to win championships. But I think that – you know, once you know who's at the head of a, of a certain program and you see the work that they're doing to bring in the community, um, that right there is a win, you know, for us. And that's that's what I expect for us to to be able to do and have as we move forward. And uh, it's going to be an exciting journey. All right. I think after all this, you've earned yourself uh, a, another another beverage and another nap. <laughs> another nap. <laughs> so, Mark, thank you very much for the insight again. I, I, I think it's it's awesome to let people into the world. Uh, you know, these, these coaching searches get everybody all worked up one way or the other and names, and they don't know what to believe. And I'm glad we could sit down and you could give everybody a good education on what they should believe and what happened and how it all went down. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, Paul. Thank you. As always, uh, we appreciate the time and the visit from Vice President and Director of Athletics, Mark Allnut, here on the In the Bullseye podcast.